The Trial is a novel by Franz Kafka, published in 1925, but most likely written ten years earlier. It was left unfinished and published posthumously. A nightmarish story where the rules of reality are bent and twisted, it is a story open for interpretation although told in a rigorously realistic style. Joseph K. wakes up on his 30th birthday to find two men in his boarding house. The men tell him they are warders who have come to arrest him. They know nothing of his crime, and Joseph initially thinks perhaps this is a prank played on him by his co-workers at the bank. The men take him to the room next to his, where Miss Burstner lives, and make it clear that although he is under arrest and in serious trouble, he won't be placed in confinement but is free to continue working. Joseph goes to work and his day proceeds without further incident. That evening he visits Miss Burstner to apologize for the trouble and tries to kiss her, but she rebuffs him. The next day Joseph receives a phone call and is informed that his initial court date is set for next Sunday. He is given an address but no specific time. Joseph travels to the location and finds a rundown apartment building that appears to be empty. He wanders inside until he finds the court set up in the attic of the building, where it is hot and stuffy. Although there is little guidance, Joseph manages to make a lengthy speech complaining about his treatment and the entire process. While he is at court, he observes two people having sex in the room, which everyone ignores. Later, Joseph returns to the court and finds that the court offices are located in an even higher area, hotter and shabbier. Joseph goes to work and is startled to find the two agents in one of the bank's storerooms, being whipped by a third man. Joseph is informed that the agents are being punished due to his speech complaining about how he was treated. Joseph visits his uncle, who raised him. His uncle is extremely worried about Joseph's situation and urges him to hire a lawyer he introduces Joseph to. The lawyer has a nurse with him named Lenny who seems overly familiar. The lawyer tells Joseph that everything about the process is secret, and that the best thing he can do is prepare a brief asserting his innocence, which will likely never be read. The lawyer startles Joseph by revealing that the chief clerk of the court has been hiding in the shadows, listening. The chief clerk emerges and joins them. Joseph is lured away by Lenny, who takes him to the next room and seduces him. When the lawyer leaves, Joseph's uncle rebukes him for disrespecting the court. At the bank, where Joseph's work has suffered due to his worry over his mysterious case, a client directs Joseph to a man named Titarelli who paints the trial portraits for the court. Titarelli tells Joseph no one has ever been found innocent by the higher court, and advises him to either acquire a judgment of innocence from a lower court, which might be overturned at any time, or to attempt to slow down the process as much as possible to forestall judgment. When he leaves Titarelli's apartment through a back door, Joseph finds himself in more court offices. Tired of being powerless, Joseph goes to the lawyer's offices to fire him. There he meets another client who tells him he's been working with the lawyer on his case for five years and has lost everything. The lawyer emerges and treats the other client like a dog, mocking him. As part of his work at the bank, Joseph finds himself at the cathedral, where he encounters a priest preparing to deliver a sermon who then addresses him by name. The priest tells Joseph a parable about a man who waits by a doorway his entire life trying to gain access to the law. The priest tells Joseph that this parable is one of the founding documents of the court, and that different officials have interpreted it differently. The night before his 31st birthday, Joseph is visited by another pair of men. He goes with them without complaint, and in fact has to direct them as they walk through the city as they defer to him in every decision. He leads them to the quarry at the edge of town and they produce a large butcher's knife and pass it between themselves nervously. Joseph understands he is meant to kill himself, but he refuses to take the knife. In the end, one of the men plunges the knife into Joseph's chest and twists, and Joseph says, like a dog, and dies. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.